show on the streets. Hump Day bringing you your Alabama football news. In my own words, your Shirley Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Welcome in, welcome in. We're bringing you the show from the magic city of Birmingham. Streaming this to you on YouTube. And speaking of the channel, you go ahead right now. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, smash subscribe right now. Hit that like button, give us that thumbs up here. Make the short network your platform channel and space to talk Bama. Turn all of those notifications on, hit that little bell so that way you miss absolutely nothing when it comes to your Crimson Tide. We also got you covered here on Facebook and Twitter as well, streaming to you this show. We got a great one today. Got a great one this evening. Now, before I say anything else, I am not a recruiting guru. I am not. I know enough. I dabble in enough to form a conversation. Justin Smith, he eats, sleeps, breathes this. This is his wheelhouse right there. And you can follow him, as always, on social media. You can follow him right here on our YouTube channel as he does his show, The Process, every Tuesday and Thursday on Touchdown Alabama Magazine. However, I have my thoughts about Arch Manning as he's visiting this week, five-star uh, five quarterback for the 2023 class, and also you've got Mr. Lornigan, who is the other quarterback that Alabama is looking at as well as a four-star talent. So we'll talk about that. We'll look at one Aaron Anderson, the five-star true freshman wide receiver from Louisiana. He has joined uh, Jameer Gibbs, Terion Arnold, in uh, switching up his number a little bit from the spring to uh, uh, this upcoming season. So we'll look at the number that Aaron Anderson will be donning, will be rocking, and also we'll talk about the Alabama alums at quarterback, Mac Jones, uh, Jalen Hurts, and Tua Tagovailoa, and what they're doing in the NFL offseason camps, because all three of these guys are putting on a show looking to really shine in year three for each of them in the pros. But as always, we want to hear from you, the Bama fans. You can do this by calling 205-448-1358, number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358, one more time. 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. The Daily Super Chat Go, $75. Daily Super Chat Go right there. Appreciate the love from you guys. But, John, let's get into this uh, topic right here. And like I mentioned before, I am not a recruiting expert. That's not, that's not me. I dabble in it enough. I have enough of a conversation to you know, make points, make opinions, make thoughts. Justin Smith, he's the guy when it comes down to recruiting. However, I have a thought when it comes down to one Arch Manning five-star quarterback for the 2023 recruiting cycle. He is visiting the University of Alabama this weekend. And uh, although you have some fans that feel like, we don't, Bama, we don't need Arch Manning. Alabama football don't need Arch over here. You know, you got Jalen Milrow. You got Ty Simpson. And, you know, here comes this Eli Holstein kid. He just committed. You know, if, if he signs, you know, here's the third guy. You really don't need Arch Manning in the program. But because of his last name and because of the family lineage he's from, when you discuss the great Archie Manning, SEC legend, Ole Miss legend, went to the NFL, played pro football. When you discuss his uncles, Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, SEC legends, college football legends, NFL legends, Super Bowl champions, Super Bowl MVPs. One is a for sure bona fide first ballot Hall of Famer in Peyton Manning. And Eli Manning, he's going to get a lot of consideration for that Hall of Fame. And I think he'll get in there as well. So because of the name that Arch Bears, more so the fan base goes, man, if we can get Arch Manning, man, if Arch can come in here, that, that, will, that, that will tick off Ole Miss and tick off Tennessee and love it. We, we can get old Arch Manning in here where this Alabama program is concerned. So you have two different sides here of the coin. But the thing about this is, uh, for Arch, is I, I find this visit is pivotal because – in Coach Saban's mind, it's it's always, uh, we would love to have you in Alabama. We would love to have you in Tuscaloosa. 
We'd love to have you with the Crimson Tide. But just because we would love to have you does not mean we will wait on you. If another guy is prepared right now to make a move to commit to the Crimson Tide, we're going to look directly at the other guy that's right now prepared to make the move to come to Alabama. And, uh, you know, as of right now, the Tide already has Eli Holstein, who has committed to the University of Alabama. And even though, you know, when Holstein took his visit, you know, when Holstein took his visit, you know, fell in love with the plays, enjoyed the plays, even though he was recently committed to Texas A&M, he saw, hey, I can really do some things here for the Crimson Tide. So if you look at it, if Bryce Young was to leave after this season and Eli Holstein holds that commitment all the way out and signs, you would have three quarterbacks with Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, and Holstein. But the conversation becomes uh, – Arch Manning and Dylan Lonergan, which one of these two commits for the 2023 class with hosting? Manning or Lonergan? Lonergan is good as a four-star from Georgia. He's good. He's got accuracy. He's got footwork. He's got pocket presence. He's got arm talent. The young man's good. Watch his tape. He's good. Can make throws on the field. He is good. But it comes down to which one of these two? And Lornigan enjoyed his visit. The to our own Justin Smith, he enjoyed his visit to the University of Alabama. And even though Holstein committed, it did not stop Lornigan from taking that visit, from uh, embracing the campus, from uh, let, taking it all in, so to speak, and uh, having Alabama as one of those teams in the back of his mind, one of those schools in the back of his mind where, that he goes, you know what? I could be a star here. I could be an impact player here. I could be special here. I can prove that I could be one of those guys if I talk about years down the road that left his mark at the capstone, that left his mark in Tuscaloosa. But Manning or Larnigan, which one uh, kind of sort of makes that move to come to Alabama? And, uh, you know, for me, and this is this me personally here, for me, this is not the uh, – Alabama has been known – and the Nick Saban era to take two quarterbacks in a signing class. Typically, Coach Saban wants to have four scholarship quarterbacks on the roster, whether that's for injury purposes, to have depth, whether it's for somebody may hit the transfer portal or leave out, and you have guys to sort of cushion the blow, but Saban always tends to like to have four scholarship quarterbacks here on the roster. And uh, I go back to 2017 here for just a moment. You had Tua Tagovailoa and Mac Jones. They both came in the same class. Mac Jones could have easily went to Kentucky. Kentucky wanted him, and he liked Kentucky. But he knew if I come to Alabama, even though Tua Tagovailoa is already committed, signed, coming in here, I get the coaching, I get the tutelage, I get the development, I get what I need to be successful in Tuscaloosa. So. Alabama signs both guys, Tua and Mac, and uh, both guys, went, they both became starters. They both won national championships. They both set single-season school records. They both won a host of individual awards. Most importantly, they both were first-round picks in their respective NFL drafts. Both were able to accomplish all of their dreams. Both came in the same class, so... When I look at just Arch Manning here for a moment, there's a different recruiting pitches Coach Saban can go with when you look at trying to land a guy of Manning's caliber. So I think the first recruiting pitch Saban can do is Alabama's becoming a quarterback factory now. He can, he can throw that out there to Arch Manning. He can go, you know what, Arch, in years past, people looked at Alabama as, well, you can get a running back from Alabama, sure. You can get a wide receiver from Alabama, most definitely. You can get an offensive lineman for Alabama. Yeah. You can get a de you can get defensive players from the Crimson Tide, but Alabama not necessarily a quarterback factory. Now Saban can say, hey Arch, you look at uh Tua Tagovailoa, first round pick. Hey, came from right here. Quarterback factory. Hey, hey Arch, you remember old Mac Ten, Mac Jones? Came from right here. He dies in the NFL. Bama, we a quarterback factory. You look at uh Jalen Hurts. I get it. He spent his final season in Oklahoma, 
But three of those four years, hey, he was right here, Alabama, Tuscaloosa. He's now in the NFL, Crimson Tide, quarterback factory. That is a pitch Nick Saban can use. The next one Coach Saban can use is uh, um, uh, the fact that Alabama is uh, developing guys. I mean, the fact that they're, they're developing players just, you know, across the board. And he can develop the players all across the board. It's not just, you know, running backs, wide receivers, the developing guys. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that, John Ivory. Appreciate that. John, get me right there. Number two, you know, he can, he can, he can, he can create his own legacy. Arch Manning can create a legacy all of his own. That's number two. He can create a legacy all of his own. And uh, we saw how you know, Arch, Archie Manning created that legacy all of his own at Ole Miss. We saw Eli Manning create a legacy all of his own at Ole Miss. We saw Peyton Manning create a legacy all of his own at Ole, in, uh, Tennessee. Nick Saban can tell Arch Manning, hey, young man, you can create something all of your own at Alabama. You can be the first Arch Manning in Alabama. It could be Arch Manning Day in Tuscaloosa in the, in the years to come in the future down the road. You can create your own niche right here in Title Town. So that's another pitch right there. He can throw at him. And then number three, you know, Nick Saban can create that pitch for, you know, Arch, if you come to Tuscaloosa, you know, three to four years later, you can be a first-round pick yourself. You know, we, we, we didn't put in two first-rounders. Mac first rounder, two a first rounder. Look at Bryce Young, potential third first rounder right there. Especially he comes out with a monster season in the in the upcoming fall. You already got people talking about he's uh, potentially the number one overall pick of the number two overall pick, the number one overall quarterback in the 2023 draft. So uh, just the, the, the simple fact of he can create the legacy all, all of his own, Arch Manning. He can become the the latest, you know, first round pick down the line from a quarterback perspective where Alabama is concerned. And, uh, you know, he can come to a place that's becoming a quarterback factory. All of these things Coach Saban can pitch out here to Arch Manning to land him into the program for 2023 with the young men visiting this weekend. But it's going to be interesting. Does Arch choose to make the move to come to Alabama? Eli Holstein made the move. He, he, didn't, get, he didn't provide that commitment. Dylan Lonergan, really, really good. And he's taking his visit. Alabama's right there on his mind. Does he make that move to commit to the Crimson Tide? So a lot of things right now are in the corner of Arch Manning. What does he choose to do? What option does he choose to take? Some fans look at it as, we don't really need him. Bama don't really need him. We can do without him. Some fans go, but it's Arch Manning, the Manning name. Need that in here. So... It'll be intriguing to see what happens. But we're going to take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that down. Upon our return, we get into the phone lines. We grab your calls, your thoughts, your conversations. I mean, what do you think of all of us, fans? Dylan Lonigan, Arch Manning, who becomes that second guy to commit for the 2023 class? Does Alabama even need Arch Manning? I want your thoughts. Let's get your thoughts right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. Nine players have teamed up and released the Alabama Team Paper, which is a video yearbook they've put out for sale direct to fans. Now, for the first time, small dollar purchases from the fans can support the players as a group as well as a great cause because one dollar of every subscription payment is donated to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Be a five-star fan base and support your team and a great cause with Team Paper. Check it out at teampaper.com slash Alabama. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. 
We're back into the action here, folks. Appreciate you guys on a Wednesday hump day. Hottest show on the streets here. Talking Bama in my own words. Yours truly, Stephen M. Smith. Touchdown. Alabama Magazine. I got a shout out my girl C. She with that $75 donation. She handled the business by herself today. Taking care of that goal for us right here on the show. Appreciate that love and support from C. She helping us out right here. And we're going to go to the phone lines to grab your calls. The call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205 448 1358. Number to call in 205 448 1358. We grab this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How are you feeling? State your name and where are you calling from? Kyron, how are, you, how are you feeling, man? What's going on? Show is how do. Uh, how is it determined who gets what jersey number? And I ask that because, you know, with, especially with college football, everybody wants to wear a single digit, everyone, every receiver, running back, corner. Um, you know, they all want to wear the number one, number two. And I, I believe Jameer Gibbs is wearing number one. Uh, he's a, he's a first-year guy. So in your, to your knowledge, how do guys, particularly at Alabama and college in general, decide who gets what number, especially like the coveted number, number one jersey or for instance, right? I played. I played in high school. I wore number three, you know, and everybody wanted number three, but I got it. So just, just uh, that's just my question: is how do I'm, you think they they pick their numbers? I think Kyron. I think that there's a lot of communication that goes into that. So I think the players communicate amongst themselves what number that they want, and if somebody else wants that same number, there's a compromise there. Uh, for a lot of that, it's uh, first come, first serve. If there's a guy that wore number one the previous season and that guy graduated and, and the next guy up in the line wants to take that number and they feel like they're in that leadership position to take that number, that they can take that number. But a lot of that is first come, first serve. A lot of that is conversation, communication of, hey, coach, I want this number, or, or hey, bro, I know you, I know we both want the number five, let's flip forward. We both want the number three, let's flip forward, or, you know, I'll take this number. You take that number. I think. I think it all has to go down to a lot of communication. Awesome. Good. Good to know. I, I just always wondered. And as far as, as far as the Arch Manning thing, I mean, you know, I, I think we'll be all right as far as whatever he chooses to do. You know, I think he, he will be a good a good quarterback. But um, I, I I will say I doubt that he goes to Georgia. That's just 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 how I feel because Kirby Smart has a history of of bungling. High-rated quarterbacks. We all saw what he did with Justin Fields, and and if you look right now, he has two, four, or five stars sitting behind Stetson Bennett. That's not disrespect Stetson Bennett, but you know these guys are expecting to play, and he, it seems like he just doesn't have a history of of uh, you know making it, you know making the right choice as far as quarterback. Texas up in the air, so it, it, can, it can go. I believe it's either Alabama or Texas. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Arch Manning. Appreciate my man Kyron there for that call, getting started here on the show. We take this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How are we feeling? State your name and where you calling from. I'm Nate, and I'm calling from Illinois. I'm going to ask you a question, man? man. Okay. Do you think Arch Manning's ego could probably block him away from his talent? Arch Manning's ego. I, I I don't I don't think it'd be that. I mean, I guess for I guess for a lot of guys, they want to wait it out throughout their entire uh, recruitment process. Some are willing to just make a commitment dead on the spot, and others they like to sit here and you know and flirt around. You know, let's see, you know, who wants to cater to me? Let's, let's see what this what this school offer. Let's see what that school offer. Let's see what this program offers. So some some guys like to play the field and float around and see, you know, what can I really get out of this thing while others are ready to, you know what, I'm sold on Bama or I'm sold on Ohio State or I'm, I've been sold on this school since point A, so I'm going to go here. Don't really know what Arch's process is, but he is going to be visiting Tuscaloosa this week. Yeah, I mean, if he chooses Alabama, I hope he does, but maybe he might not. Let's see. Absolutely. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, if, if, he, if he comes, great. If he doesn't, I mean, it is what it is. But appreciate that call there. We go to this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from? 
Hey, man, this is Mike from Kentucky. What's up, my brother? Big Mike, what's going on, man? Hey, bro, I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about something ain't nobody talking about, bro. Now, I don't know what people are going to think about this call, but I don't care. I'm going to say what I got to say. Go ahead. Okay. The Manning name has been a nemesis to Alabama for, if Arch goes somewhere else, this will be four decades, bro. I don't ever want to see the name Manning on an Alabama jersey. And that's just the way it is. It's a long, deep rivalry with me, bro. I don't care. I really don't even care if he comes or not. What do you think, brother? I mean, I guess uh, call it's... me old school, but that's the way I feel. I was around for his daddy's daddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever. <laughs> hey, Mike, I feel like Mike. I feel you. Like th- th- there's. I don't like it, Manning, and it, 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 it is. I mean, you, that, you, but it, it, it is when you look Archie at got us a you couple know, years, Peyton, man. Peyton. Too, but them boys can you know they're good, but the the scars are too deep for me, bro. I don't. Uh-uh. <laughs> I guess I'm crazy. We got plenty of talent anyway, man. Roll Tide to you, brother. Appreciate Mike from Kentucky calling in, and that, that, that's the realness, though. That's the realness coming from Mike right there, because you know Peyton played at Tennessee, and you as Alabama fans, you know you, you can't stand Tennessee. You know Eli played at Ole Miss, and Alabama fans, you can't stand Ole Miss. So. Do you want a man? And I, and I, I guess having that name in an Alabama jersey for some would be really cool. And then for others, you may feel how Mike from Kentucky feels. Like we don't really, Alabama doesn't really need that name in a crimson and white jersey when you've got a Ty Simpson, when you've got a Jalen Milrow, when you have an Eli Holstein, should he sign and fulfill that whole commitment? You know, if a Dylan Lonigan was to commit and sign, you know, you got him on there potentially. You could have him. So it, it's it's just a very intriguing conversation to have Arch Manning or to not have Arch Manning. That is the question. But the brother will be visiting the University of Alabama this week. However, here's a cool topic. Jaheim Otis. Here's a man people want to talk about. Jaheim Otis and his incredible body transformation, weight loss, whatever you want to call it. I mean, he is, he is doing it. Jaheim Otis is now down to 357 pounds. He tweeted this out today. He was listed on RollTide.com at 370. He's dropped to 357. He's saying he still he still has got 13 more or 17 more pounds to go to his target goal. So his target goal is 340. If Jaheim Otis can be on the field, 340 pounds, that type of quickness, speed, technique, playmaking ability, as far as being an interior pass rusher, run stopper, a guy that Nick Saban said himself, very hard, difficult to block. Flash is big potential, and you're seeing the work yet of him dropping this weight down to 357. Future right here, folks, at nose tackle. He's going to get playing time, John. I I don't know when the first game he will see action in. I can't tell that right now. But the way this man's working, Jaheim Otis will get playing time on the field. We go to a break right now, folks. Don't touch that dab. When we return, we talk about when Aaron Anderson – the latest freshman to pull out, to announce a new number on social media. And he's got a lot of expectations with this new number. We'll talk about it after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Look at all these great players in Touchdown Alabama magazine. Man, wait till I turn up this year. I'm going to be on the front cover. But what if Will goes off? Or Joe, DeMarco, Chris, Tim, Christian. Don't wait. Order now at touchdownalabama.com or call 833-483-2624 today. Christian. 
you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. We're coming with the heat back from the break of number one form for Bama. Football news, in my own words, was truly Stephen Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine on a Wednesday. Appreciate you guys checking us out. We go to now Mr. Aaron Anderson, four-star, well, five-star, excuse me, from Etna Carr High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Ch- chose the Crimson Tide, enrolled early in spring. Uh, war number 82 in spring, had a really good spring, but he becomes the latest guy to switch to a new number he's joining jameer gibbs uh terry on arnold uh, you know and also i guess joining the likes of uh emmanuel henderson and isaiah bond in terms of picking a number but for aaron anderson as as elusive as he is quick as he is talented as he is big play big uh ability that he's got he's rocking a number that carries a lot of expectations. Aaron Anderson is switching from number 82 to number 13. I've mentioned this before. Numbers, jersey numbers mean something for Alabama football fans. If a player puts on number 12, you're carrying the expectations of Joe Namath, Ken Stabler, Greg McElroy, also Pat Trammell. A lot of big guys, a lot of big names wore 12. If you're, if you're rocking number 55, that's Derek Thomas, 55. You better wear that number like your life depended on it. You wear 25, that's Rolando McLean. You got to represent that number to the fullest. You wear 32, that's C.J. Mosley, that's Rashawn Evans. You got to wear that number to the fullest. That's what Deontay Lawson's got to do right now. I mean, there, there are certain numbers in the Alabama football folklore you put that jersey on, you better rock that number. You better rep that number and make it yours. Because somebody before you had to make it theirs. And for Aaron Anderson, wearing number 13, uh, Tua Tonga Valola made that number sing. He made 13 sing with them coconuts and pineapples. Tua made 13 go crazy. It, even with injuries, Tua rocked 13. In terms of, uh, of the quarterback perspective. And then when you look at George, the man, Teague, rocked. 13 uh, from a defensive back, defensive perspective. Both of these two legends were in that number. So for Aaron Anderson, wearing this number from an offensive standpoint, got to do it big. He, he's got to do it big. Now, the good thing for Anderson is we saw in the spring uh, his potential, right? We saw him uh, make big play after big play in the spring scrimmages. We saw him make plays in the A-Day game. Coach Saban talked about him at nauseum, mentioning his hands, his speed, his quickness, his playmaking ability, his elusiveness. There was a clip that came from one of the scrimmages that hit social media. That clip was not supposed to hit social media, but did it anyway. It was the clip of uh, Ty Simpson hitting Aaron Anderson, and he spins out of a Jordan battle tackle and goes 20-plus yards down the field. Puts a few dipsy do moves on Kyrie Jackson. And it took Malachi Moore getting it from behind, putting the brother on the ground. You know, that clip right there. It, we, we saw, you know, from that clip and uh, just different rumblings throughout spring practice how good Aaron Anderson is and potentially how good and how dangerous he really can be. You know, Coach Saban mentioned him as a guy that could be a punt returner, can be a kick returner. You got to have that type of explosive juice to operate in those two facets, along with being a wide receiver. So, Aaron Anderson going from 80 to a 13. Really intrigued by this. What will, we, what will he be able to do? How will he be able to pop off, turn up, do his thing, uh, represent that number that Tua Tonga Valoa and George Teague made great? So, definitely will keep my eyes there on Aaron Anderson. The remainder of summer workout, seven on seven things, getting into fall camp. We go to another break right here, folks, on the show. When we get back, 
We jump back into the phone lines. We grab your calls. We grab your thoughts. We grab your conversations. Light the phone lines up. We want to hear you right after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly. Touchdown Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, we're back into the, to the action from the break. Here on a Wednesday hump day, number one form for Crimson Tide. Football news, in my own words, or truly. Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. As you're getting your thoughts, prepared to call in. Phone lines open, 205-448-1358. Number right there, 205-448-1358. There's been some, some uh, conversation going on in the chat about, you know, Christian Leary and how this could be a big year for him, and it can be. I mean, oh, mama, it can be, especially after the spring Leary had. And the spring game Leary had. What do you have, like five catches, 106 yards, one touchdown? Shh. Like Christian Leary had a really good spring. And uh, what he can do out here with a Jermaine Burton, with a Tyler Harrell, with a uh, uh, you know Isaiah Bond. But I think Christian Leary is going to have a big year. I think he's going to have a phenomenal season. He, he's going to be he's going to be in that conversation to be one of the three or four starting guys in that rotation. He'll be in that conversation. I know, I know Ja'Cory Brooks is going to be in there somewhere. Uh, Trayshawn Holden is going to be in there. But Christian Leary, after what he did in the spring, uh, improving his route running, uh, improving all parts of his game, uh, and stepping up playing big-time ball in the A-Day game itself, Christian Leary is going to put him he – has, he has himself in position to be uh, big-time. So here we go. In terms of, of summer camp – Summer camp for these guys will begin, uh, it will start mid-June. Mid-June, uh, it will be mid-June throughout July. It will start mid-June. Right now they're in workouts. These guys are in weight training. They're in classes. They're in nutrition stuff right now. But by mid, by mid to late June, uh, the, the camp stuff will start. By mid to late June, you'll start hearing conversations about seven-on-sevens. 11 on 11. You'll start hearing those mid to late June. And then throughout July, you will hear that until August rolls around and that begins fall camp. But by mid to late June, summer camp, where those seven on seven starts, that, that they'll be right there. But, I mean, to, to me, I'm excited about the receiver room as a whole. I'm excited about the running back room as a whole. I'm excited about, of course, Bryce Young, most definitely. You know, him being able to take this team win a national championship with it. I'm intrigued by the offensive line. Can Eric Wolford, as the O-line coach, and I think he can, can he get this done where this offensive line is playing uh, close to what the 2020 group was and having a transfer in um, – Tyler Steen, Tyler Steen in here, and having uh, Seth McLaughlin, Javion Cohan, you know, all these guys, because they work together 
and be as close to that 2020 group as, as, as it possibly can get to. I'm intrigued by the offensive line. Defense, I have, I have no concerns. This defense is ready. I mean, defense, I have no concerns. The only thing I have to say is, you know, for Coach Pete Golding, having that creativity with his blitz packages, with his pressure looks, and hitting home with those. Other than that, the defense has got all the, they got all the monsters. Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell, uh, Henry Toto, Jalen Moody, Byron Young, Justin Boigby, uh, Jamil Burroughs, Jamarian Latham, DJ Dale. I mean, they got all the monsters in the secondary. Eli Ricks, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Kyrie Jackson, uh, Malachi Moore, DeMarco Hellams, Jordan Battle, Brian Branch. They're all there. So defensively, I have no concerns. Special teams, I have no concerns. Will Reichert's back. Uh, James Burnup in the spring game looks very much so improved. Um, you know, kickoff returners, punt returners, Saban's going to have the best guys, the fast guys, the most electric guys out there. So the only slight concern I have in this offensive line play together as a unit and be impactful as a unit. That's my whole concern. Aside from that, I'm excited just to watch this team work here in the coming fall. But Going into this topic, and this one is on Mr. Bryce Young as he was the recipient of the uh, best male amateur college, the best male amateur athlete of the year, best male amateur athlete of the year, and this came from the Alabama Sports Writers Association for the best athlete of the year, not not the best male athlete, the best athlete of the year. And that came from the uh, Alabama Sports Riders Association. He beat out a gymnast from Auburn for the award. So that's a uh, big, big upset of one. Bryce Young continuing uh, his trophy case here, being the best athlete, state of Alabama, for the Alabama Sports Riders Association. Bryce trying to become a national champion as a starting quarterback for the Crimson Tide. He's also trying to be the first player since Archie Griffin in 1974 and 1975 to repeat as the Heisman Trophy winner. But we take our final break here on the show on Touch That Dow, folks. When we get back, we get into now, the Bama alums, quarterbacks in the NFL, Mac Jones, Tua Tagovailoa, Jalen Hurts, they're tearing it up in OTAs. Training camp is coming soon. All three looking to take huge steps in their, in their growth as starting quarterbacks. We'll talk about all three right after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. All right, people, what's going on? How we feeling? We're back in from the break. My number one ticket here for Bama. Football news, in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate the love coming from all of you checking out the show. Before we get into the final topic of conversation, got to remind you of TDAWare.com. That's TDAWare.com. So check us out for all of your fashion, clothing, cultural, swagger, sauce, drips, needs we get your shopping done right here make us your one-stop shop for all things bama football tdawear.com 
That's TDAWear.com. Get yourself set up with your gear to support your favorite football program. Or if you want to start doing this right now in summer workouts, maybe you want to start in fall camp, maybe you want to get your gear to start the regular season. Who knows? But get yourself suited up. Suited and booted up with your tie gear, TDAWear.com. It's TDAWear.com. Continuing to show that support for Coach Saban, the University of Alabama, the student athletes, and us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we look at here the Bama alums quarterback edition here for the Crimson Tide in the NFL, and that's Mac Jones, Tua Tonga Vangoa, and Jalen Hurts. I mean, uh, NFL offseason camps, all three of these guys are just tearing it up. Organized team activities, they're killing OTAs. Uh, training camps coming soon. Uh, all three guys are looking to take major jumps here this season. Starting this thing off with Mac Jones, the Patriots love what they have. I mean, they love it. From Belichick to the receivers to the offensive line, the position coaches, Robert Kraft, the entire organization is loving what it's got in Mac Jones. In two days, Mac Jones has completed 40 of 46 passes, and he's been as accurate as it comes. Deep ball, short game, intermediate routes, slants, post, bang eights. He's putting it dead on the money. And it's insane how this young man has gone from a three-star, skinny three-star, that very few people thought would have the success he's had to being a starter for the Crimson Tide, setting single-season school records in 2020, national champion, Heisman finalist, All-American. Then you have folks that go, he ain't, he don't got a strong enough arm. He ain't mobile enough. No way he's a first-round pick. He's a first-round pick. Top 15. 15 overall by the Patriots. Last season, Set single season record, set single, set, set franchise rookie records for New England, made the Pro Bowl, took the Patriots to the, to the playoffs, and now all we're hearing is, oh, he's lost weight, his stomach is gone, he looks like a pro's pro, he looks good, he's dropping dimes everywhere, he's the leader that we need. Like, Mac Jones ain't playing with him, y'all. Mac 10 ain't playing. This, this is going to be a nice year. And people people talk about, look at what Josh Allen is doing in Buffalo. And Josh Allen, he's the truth. I ain't going to take nothing from that cat right there. But what Mac Jones is doing this offseason and preparing for year two, you definitely want to keep your eyes on him out there in New England. And as we switch here to Jalen Hurts, Jalen, uh, we, we, we've seen dreadhead Jalen. We've seen the. Uh, Gumbo, fade, cut, you know, the gummy, fade, cut, Jalen. Now year three, we've, we've been introduced to Afro Jalen. And Afro Jalen is pretty lit right now. Um, Jalen and OTAs, much like Mac Jones, has been lighting it up, been dominating. Deep passes, uh, uh, timing routes, intermediate routes, short passes. Like the, the t- Nick Sirianni, head coach of the Eagles, mentioned the other day, he has noticed a big difference in Jalen's accuracy and his footwork and his release point, getting the ball out quicker. The game has slowed down a lot for him. And part of the reason why the game has slowed down is for the first time since his high school days at Channel View down there in Houston, Texas, being coached by his dad, a Varian Hurts senior, Jalen has been in the same system going on his – Second year, he's been in the same system. I mean, I, I, that's, that's a great thing. I mean, at Alabama, I mean, he had three different offensive coordinators. He had Lane Kiffin as a freshman in 2016. He had Brian Dable as a sophomore in 2017. He had Michael Loxley as a junior in 2018. I mean, of course, his senior year, he goes to Oklahoma, and, you know, Lincoln Riley has some stability there, but – I mean, for the first time since his high school days, Jalen has a familiar system that he knows how to operate in and doing quite well in it. And the entire team, the entire community and organization of Philadelphia is bought into him. Looking forward to seeing what he does here this season. And then last but not least, too, uh, the Dolphins social media have, they, they, they finally gotten the gist of, hey, if we're going to put out videos of Tua, 
Let's put out the right videos of him just dropping the ball right in the basket of these receivers. Let's not put out the video of him uh, having a ball that seemingly, quote unquote, appeared like it was underthrown. And then Mike McDaniel, the head coach, has to come out and clarify all of this. But to an OTA, he's confident. Conf confident. Got a little swagger to him. Got a little cockiness to him. Like, Tua is coming out of his shell. And it's because of he's taken hard coaching his whole life. Dad coached him hard. High school coach coached him hard. Trent Dilfer grilled him at the Elite 11. Nick Saban grilled him, coached him hard at Alabama. Brian Flores acting like he wasn't even the guy at Miami to his first two years. Now you have a guy in Mike McDaniel wired into you. He's more so of a teacher. It's different. You're not getting coached hard. You can be yourself. And Tua's taking on that personality. And he's flourishing with it. I mean, he's ripping up OTAs, dropping darts to Tyreek Hill, Mike Gesicki, Jalen Waddle, and other weapons down there in Miami. So all three of these quarterbacks are looking forward to the fall for their respective NFL teams. Dominated OTAs, looking forward to seeing what they do in training camp coming up here soon. But as always, folks, you want the best news, notes, information, and coverage here on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store. If you got the Android phone, now your audio needs, check us out, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. Got you covered right there. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll try to be back on Friday, continuing the conversation that is Bama football. Remember, Tide fans, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama magazine. Had that sent to your door. That link found. Yep, you guessed it. In the description. If you're trying to get the fresh edition, print edition of TDA the magazine, you go to touchdownalabama.com. You click join, become a member or a subscriber today. That link in the description. Also, if you're trying to get the four finger bling necklace, four finger bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys that we own, the fourth quarter.com. That link in the description as well. Appreciate all of you guys, you fan, all of the fans, you, for your donations, for your dialogue, for the conversations, for the chats, making this show what it is, even during the offseason. Got to shout out my man John Ivory in the production studio doing his thing. And until next time, folks, husbands, love you wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children continue throughout the summer. Doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing. To not be bored, as always, you get yourself those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, enjoy the and continue to enjoy the NBA Finals between the Warriors and the Boston Celtics. Looking forward to see who wins that. And until next time, folks, I'm your man Stephen M. Smith, and you've been listening to In My Own Words. 